The immigration debate in the United States is becoming more heated by the day. Everyone continues to use immigrants for low-paying work, and they even take pleasure in their media, but they don't provide them with the necessary assistance and practically treat them like slaves. Every day, new legislation is debated in an effort to address the issue. JP takes over the drive through shift at a burger joint. When he declines their demands, which are unreasonable, two of his clients become insulting to the point of using racial epithets. They leave in a fury after JP insults them back right away and exposes them on the speakers. Subsequently, a carload of females pulls up, and to JP's amazement, it's his sister Lily. Her pals break the huge news that Lily has enrolled at college and will shortly be leaving. JP tells Lily he's proud of her and that he will miss her a lot when he gets home. When they snap a photo together, JP discovers she has a secret tattoo. After noticing something behind her ear, he decides not to tell their mother right now. Later on, the family celebrates Lily's achievement with a party. Lily prepares a cootie catcher and teasingly tosses it at JP to label him a geek while they are having fun. In addition, they tenderly refer to one another as losers by making the letter L with their hands. When Lily's moment to speak, their mother offers a moving speech for her daughter, and then out of nowhere, police lights come outside. When it becomes clear that Governor Finn has issued an executive order to arrest all illegal immigrants and their American children as accomplices for not reporting their parents, the police storm into the house and arrest every member of the family. As Finn makes an appearance on television to defend his zero tolerance policy, all the kids are placed in cages, and JP is horrified to witness Lily board a bus and be sent to a new location. A few days later, JP is asked to see by a U.S. Department of Homeland Security official. JP's mother will be deported despite the failure of efforts to reverse the executive order, but she may be allowed to remain if a naturalized citizen of the United States comes forward to claim her. Since he's still in custody, JP is unable to accomplish it legally, but he still has a choice, the Elderly American Tolerance and Understanding Project. JP will be released from the community service program after completing his task of assisting elderly residents of retirement homes. After JP accepts to join, he is interviewed by two extremely serious officials, who find his jokes offensive. Numerous children of immigrants are also profiled and photographed in criminal attire. They all had no option but to agree to be there, which is why their interview responses are rife with sarcasm and disdain for the entire procedure. Officer Bruce reminds them of the restrictions before to their departure for the retirement community. They are unable to contact the outside world. They have to abide by curfew, and he will return them to the detention facility if they mispave. In order for the program coordinators to keep an eye on their whereabouts, they must also always wear ankle monitors. The trio eventually arrives at Alcove, a retirement community, where they meet Eddie, the program's creator. He makes a spiel about how gratifying this is as he walks them around, but no one seems to be listening. Additionally, he presents Cynthia and James, the operation officers, to them. As they stroll through the various facilities, JP spots Greta, a woman in a wheelchair holding a lily in her hands. The volunteers get to eat lunch after the tour, and JP gets to make friends with the other volunteers, while griping about the terrible quality of the cuisine. Mika says she's Argentinian after Big Mac notices she's white. Chris acknowledges that he avoids contacting elderly folks and stays away from food that wasn't prepared by his mother due to potential toxins. Camilla snaps, telling them that this is really serious and that they are treating things too lightly. James arrives and hands out the uniforms, and responsibilities to everyone as Camilla gets up from the table. Greta doesn't reply when JP tries to chat to her after becoming attracted to her, once more. When Mika asks him to read to her, JP picks up any old book and begins to read. Greta abruptly declares, you will die here, shocking JP. Cynthia runs to give Greta a tranquilizer injection and wheel her away as she starts to sob harder. The gang tries to get Chris to eat in the evening because all he's taken throughout the day is his inhaler. Chris declines claiming he is confident that something strange is happening, and that he believes the organizers are keeping an eye on them, via a dark glass. He declares he will attempt to flee and disregards the advice of others, around him to stay put. Chris simply gets up and tries to unlock a closed door. This sets off the alarm, and security personnel arrive shortly after to apprehend Chris. Chris is being carried away, and all the others can do is watch. When JP gets up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, he passes by the window and spots an owl. Upon his return, he discovers an elderly woman who is chanting, Virgil will set you free. The lady suddenly charges at him, attempting to harm him, but Cynthia gets there in time to sedate her and take her away, and James chastises JP for being helpless. Eddie shows JP and his buddies the patients with serious ailments, 
by taking them to another hospital the following day. Additionally, he apologizes to JP and tells her that the reason for yesterday night's events was that an elderly woman secretly left the ward open. While JP's pals decide not to stay in this ward, Eddie tells James to teach JP the ropes. But when James calls JP names and things grow heated, Eddie has to tell them to calm down. Subsequently, JP and James put one of the most frail seniors to sleep. JP is abruptly bitten by a patient on the adjacent bed as they approach, knocking him out. JP is startled to discover Lily working in the infirmary when he awakens there a little while later. The room turns red and starts to bleed as she assures him that she is closer than he realizes, but JP wakes up from the dream. When Mika visits to see how his wound is healing, they talk about how the staff handles the elderly like though they are cattle. When the two of them sit down to lunch with the others, they realize they haven't heard from Chris since he attempted to flee. Camilla asks Cynthia about Chris as she passes by, and Cynthia responds that he was returned to the jail facility. After she leaves, Big Mac claims that Chris wouldn't go anywhere without his inhaler, so he knows that Cynthia is lying. He finds Chris inhaler in the hallway. Big Mac brings Greta to Philip's room in the evening so they can spend time together. Greta looks on in fear as Philip's hand suddenly bends into strange angles as Big Mac tries to attach the TV. Before Big Mac turns back, the hand drops, and as he gets closer, he discovers Philip has stopped breathing. Philip wakes up at that very time, and as his body begins to twist and contort in excruciating ways, he falls off the bed. As Philip starts to walk like a monster from a horror movie, and growls at Big Mac, the latter flees in terror. The corpse of Philip is removed the following day. Eddie tells all of the staff members, and volunteers that an investigation would be conducted even if they are unsure of Philip's whereabouts. Big Mac, though, shares with his pals what he actually witnessed. Eddie then takes JP and James to the garden to see his owl, Virgil. Explaining that Virgil is the alcove's guardian and can thus observe all that occurs, he sends the owl hunting. Eddie then draws attention to the clear hostility that exists between James and JP and asks them to embrace in order to put their disagreements behind them. The boys give each other a deep hug but still sulk and refuse to forgive one another. After it's finished, JP admits he stole James' keys with the hug. That evening, JP grants the others access to his ankle monitor so they may all enjoy themselves. They head to the pool, where Mika and JP start flirting and end up kissing. They make the decision to go farther and do the dirty work by breaking into a room covertly. Mika, who is nearby, is playing a practical joke on JP when he wakes up the next morning and gasps at the sight of an elderly woman next to him. The pals resume their work after turning on the monitors once more. As JP is telling Big Mac about his mischievous journey, he can't help but notice that Greta is having fun with the cootie catcher. Greta's sole response when he tells her Lily used to make things is to give him the catcher. He also asks if she's met Lily before. Great clasps it in his hand, and won't release it until Cynthia and James arrive to sedate and remove her. When JP returns to his pals, they all acknowledge that they can't recall anything, that happened following the pool. As JP finds a mark on Camila's neck, they deduce that they have been sedated, which supports Chris' theory. When JP plays with the cootie catcher that evening, he finds the word help to be the secret message. JP's abrupt disappearance worries Big Mac, Camilla, and Mika because it makes them think about Chris. After they decide to look into it, Camilla waits outside Jameis' office and tries to divert his attention while Big Mac and Mika enter covertly. Big Mac finds a file with the designs for an odd machine, when he opens the desk drawers with a clip. Chris is in solitary, according to another file, but he's not sure what it implies. Big Mac and Mika flee behind the furniture as James enters the office because he is getting bored with Camila's talking. Fortunately, he doesn't remain long, allowing the two of them to safely flee. Just as Big Mac and Mika are ready to share their newfound knowledge with Camila, James walks up behind them and instructs Big Mac to tighten the vent screws. Bruce intervenes to thwart a patient's attempt to harm Cynthia while Big Mac climbs a ladder to begin work. He inadvertently knocks the man into the ladder in the process, sending Big Mac tumbling to the ground. JP awakens in a lab while an unconscious Big Mac is being removed. Like the other people who are also bound, he appears to be half his own age, especially considering that he is strapped to a chair. James is also there getting some chemicals ready. JP discovers that the door is unlocked with a code by observing the employees, so as soon as he is by himself, he begins the process of escaping. Finn meets Eddie at the Finn's company-owned burger shop at the same time. It's a huge success because their meal is reasonably priced, indicating that the meat they utilize is truly donated by residents of Alcove. Finn believes that since they are not true Americans, and shouldn't be in his nation, this is what they get. Going back to JP, he finds a way to escape the chair 
and moves stealthily till he reaches the lock, he now requires the password. He chooses Virgil as the code because he recalls the woman telling him that Virgil would let him free and how Eddie referred to his owl as Alcove's gatekeeper. When the door opens, JP is able to go. James quickly notices this and informs Bruce and Cynthia before they have a chance to sedate Big Mac. As the police head out to find JP, Big Mac admits he's only playing the part of unconscious, and he also realizes Bruce forgot his keys. JP is trying to move as quickly as he can in the meantime, but it's difficult because his body has gotten much weaker. He enters a different area, where he finds out that all of the immigrants are transported there to be turned into meat. He also sees their bodies either in the chopping machine or in bags. He flees in terror, meets Mika, and pleads for assistance. Before JP faints, Mika gives him a surprise shot, and says they never accomplished the deed, but James soon finds them both. As JP wakes up, Mika is dancing with Eddie because she has always been his spy. Eddie says he's not a cannibal, he's American. He says, JP feels lightheaded from the sedative effects, but he still wants to know what happened to Lily. The side consequence of injecting the immigrants with hormones to make their flesh malleable for eating is accelerated aging. They can hide the procedure since senior citizens, living in retirement communities are ignored. The final stage, which indicates that the subject is prepared to be processed for meat, is what occurred to Philip. Camilla is in her room, fumbling with her monitor in a desperate attempt to support her friends. Big Mac shows up in the vents at that precise moment, and gives her the keys. Camilla discovers a room with monitors that the coordinators use to keep an eye on them, as she dashes to the dining area, and breaks the black glass Chris indicated. James then shows up and pulls her away while also seducing her. When Camilla awakens, she and JP are both growing older in the special ward. They decide they had to go in order to expose Finn after seeing him give a repulsive hate speech on TV. JP swears he'll get Lily out of the room, and they use their fingers to create the letter L. Lily is also present. Camilla signals that James, Cynthia, and Mika are about to sedate everyone once more by kicking their tray. The three are surrounded by elderly folks, who come out of bed and attack them in an attempt to exact their final retribution. When he notices Bruce pursuing him among the mayhem, JP flees the ward and hides in the staff lounge. When Bruce opens the door, JP charges at him, but Bruce effortlessly outmuscles him, throwing him to the ground while yanking out his catheter in a painful manner. Big Mac, who is still in the vents, notices that Bruce is choking JP, so he emerges and wraps Bruce's neck with the catheter till he passes out. The ward is still fighting when the alarm goes off. Big Mac assists JP in leaving, but when a guard tries to apprehend them, he must let go of JP. A group of elderly individuals emerge from the hallway as Big Mac presses the door into the man, and numerous staff members emerge from the door as well, congregating in the center to start yet another mob brawl. After forcing their way through, JP and Big Mac discover Camilla escorting Lily to the lift. Big Mac enters the fray and smashes a chair over James' head in an attempt to stop them. Hungry for retribution, the elderly individuals begin murdering the employees while JP, Lily, and Camilla flee via the lift. When the lift dumps the three off at a hallway they are unfamiliar with, JP ventures outside to look around. In the meantime, Big Mac takes charge of the group and leads them to freedom. When they reach the road where the woman is attempting to go home, Big Mac tries to stop her, but she becomes too afraid and flees by driving in the opposite direction. Returning to JP, he discovers an elderly Chris in a cage, but before he can free him, Eddie appears and begins strangling the man. JP strikes back with a bottle to his head in retaliation, but Eddie overwhelms him and knocks him out right away. Subsequently, he places JP on the cutting board while discussing the advancements made by the country. Fortunately, Camilla arrives and knocks Eddie out with a board. She also removes JP from the machine just in time. Soon after, Eddie awakens and launches another attack on the two while Chris' body starts to contort. When Lily realizes this and pushes a button to let Eddie out of the cage, a deranged Chris charges at Eddie, murdering him mercilessly and hurling his corpse into the machine where it explodes. Eddie is rapidly turned into hamburgers by the machine. Following that, JP, Lily, and Camellia exit the building and take a seat on a bench in the garden, where they eventually nod off. When Big Mac and his throng ultimately locate them, Big Mac becomes alarmed because they refuse to wake up and assumes they have passed away, but the three opens their eyes to show that they're okay and they're only playing a practical joke on him. All media channels will soon be reporting on the case. Finn's burger shop is closed and he has left the nation. All other parties implicated, including the US Department of Homeland Security officer, are placed under arrest. Additionally, the executive order is revoked, allowing JP's mother to finally be free.